Steve, I had the coolest experience this week with uh, one of my clients that I'm working with. Um, it's actually a couple, husband and wife couple. They are brand new clients. Um, they were working on one of the first things that we do together, which is kind of listing out all their expenses and how often they occur, how much they are, et cetera, et cetera. And they actually sent me over be- before our first session, this like giant spreadsheet, kind of a template for the budget they wanted to create. And I was honestly so jealous. It's like better than any budget I've ever created in my life. And really? I know that's subjective. <laughs> yeah. And it, maybe I shouldn't say it's better because like, what's what does that even mean? Right. The, well, there's no such yeah. Thing, yeah. But like they just thought of things that I hadn't thought of before that made me so happy. And I really don't think it's for everyone, but they're very kind of particular and they've broken things down in certain ways that that, that work for them. Huh, I'm intrigued. Tell me about this. Well, like one example um, is the way they've handled their food categories in their budget. Mm-hmm. So like I'm pretty basic in my budget because I like to keep things simple, but relatively granular. If that's an oxymoron, I'm sorry. I Welcome to my life. <laughs> When it like comes to, to just thing, enough but, detail yeah, to be useful, yeah. but not so much that it gets out of hand. Yeah, it's got to be easy. It's got to be easy or else I'm not going to do it right. So anyway, I've typically just divided my food categories into two, groceries and eating out, because those are pretty different mm-hmm. activities for me. And I kind of want to monitor those differently. Like I would prefer spending more on groceries and less on eating out. In reality, mm, not always the case. <laughs> but, right. uh, but they added a couple different categories that I really liked. One was like social eating. So that would be like going to dinner with friends. Yeah. Going to lunch with someone, going to dinner with another couple, that kind of stuff. Uh, and they, they track that even separately than like just take out for the family. I thought that was kind of cool. And yeah, so they've got uh, like groceries, convenience food. And that for them is like eating out, fast food, take out for the family, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, and then, like I said, like uh, social eating. I just, I don't know. That was kind of cool. I like that a lot. That is a good idea. And so that's something I actually stole from them and I put into my own budget. So I added, I added a new category in my budget called Meals on Me, which I think is kind of fun. Because that's just like, I do like to go out to lunch with people. And like every once in a while, I think it feels, it's great to like buy lunch for someone. Just be like, hey, let's go to lunch. It's on me. You know, I think that, that's yeah, something that I right. li- would, you know, I like doing that. I would like to do more of it, but I've never called it out as a separate thing that's important to me in my budget. And so- that always comes out from my just regular eating out budget, which it can burn through pretty quickly if, mm-hmm. if that's happening, right? So anyway, there was a lot of cool other cool stuff in here. I just love being inspired by my clients. They're kind of my heroes, and they do cool stuff. And I just wanted to, to share that, I guess. Yeah, that's really lovely. Hello there, dear listener. I am Steve. And I'm Tyler. And this is another episode of It's Not About the Money where we discuss a wide range of topics related to creating and running small businesses. Tyler and I are both small business owners like you, and this podcast is our attempt to make sense of the world one episode at a time. And as you know, if you've listened to any of our episodes about taxes, I've had so many opportunities to prove and demonstrate my ignorance on this topic, which is why I'm glad we've got Steve here on the show. And today we're talking about one of, I feel like, the most basic and yet perhaps commonly misunderstood topics for regular people like me, which is tax brackets. We want to have Steve demystify those for us. Yeah. Yeah. They sound scarier than they are. It seems like you earn more money and then you are you get bumped up to the next tax bracket. And that can be like a an onerous possibility. Yeah. You know, I remember, I think I mentioned in a previous episode, I actually was on like the borderline of tax brackets one year and I asked my my tax professional, like, is it ever good to like not earn more money? Because like then wouldn't I have to pay more in taxes if I bump? So I think, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe I'm extra dumb, but that could be a common concern people have. I'm not sure. Right. I've had and it. I'll just throw that out there. <laughs> yeah. And it is uh, that the common term tax bracket makes it easy to... Uh, envision it that way that wh- how yeah. the IRS actually refers to them as marginal rates and the marginal word is important and I'll explain here in a second what that means but uh it's not it's not as bad as it sounds that sounds worse than tax so, brackets because I have no idea what it means well yeah <laughs> that <laughs> so enlighten us enlighten us yeah <laughs> okay fair, fair enough I am guilty of using accounting terminology which is 
uh, which sounds uh, sounds what difficult for non accountant, a little esoteric. Yeah. It's esoteric, yeah, yeah, esoteric terminology that is difficult for normal people to understand. If you're not a, a nerd about accounting like me. When I first heard about tax brackets, what I thought they were is like, if you make this much money, if this is your income and it's between this range, then this is the percentage of tax that you pay, period. Oh, yes. Uh, that is a very easy way to understand it. And it is incorrect, uh, which Good. is why tax brackets are not <laughs> not as scary as they seem. Right. But yeah, that I, I, I have also thought that in my younger days. So marginal rates, uh, keep the keep the word marginal in the back of your head, and maybe okay. we'll explain it at the end, or maybe not. We'll see. Hopefully, the, as I have a little <laughs> analogy here that will hopefully help this make sense. Uh, so let's say that you've got a series of six buckets, and they're they're that they're getting a little bit bigger each time. So the first one is the smallest, and we're gonna pin we're gonna screw it up on the wall at the very top. Okay. This is the lowest tax bracket. So it's kind of like reversed, but the lowest tax bracket is at the top. Okay. Because of gravity, for my analogy. Okay. It breaks down a little bit. You, you'll see it. And it just <laughs> Keep going. <second>. Keep going. <laughs> okay. So we, uh, uh, these six buckets are kind of stacked on top of each other uh, up the wall with uh, the first bucket being at the top. And then uh, on the floor, we have a kiddie pool to catch everything else. Big bucket. Okay. Big Got bucket it. in the very bottom. You're going to have your hose with water running through it. This is your taxable income. So at the beginning of the year, you climb up the ladder and start filling up the very top bucket. Start earning money. You start earning money. Yep. And it can hold, uh, if you're married filing jointly, the the numbers for singles are slightly different. I'll just use the married filing jointly numbers for consistency throughout here. The first bucket can hold $23,200 in 2024. Okay. So you earn all the way up to twenty three thousand two hundred dollars, two hundred and one. It spills over into the bucket below. Okay. That first bucket, you pay ten percent tax on all the money in that first bucket. Now you're uh, you're making twenty three thousand two hundred and one dollars. You have bumped up to the next bracket, uh -huh. which is twelve percent. Uh -huh. But you're only paying twelve percent on the water that's in that bucket. The money that's in the second bucket. Oh, okay. So as you keep filling up from the top bucket, you're still at the top of the ladder, filling up from the very top. Mm -hmm. uh, the second bucket is filling up. You're paying 12% on all the money in that second bucket. Mm -hmm. And eventually that one fills up. It spills over to the next one. And so at 94300 uh, now you're in the 22% tax mm -hmm. bracket, but you're only paying 22% on the money in that bucket. Every, mm -hmm. Everything in the previous bucket was 12%, 10% in the top bucket. Does that make sense? So here's yeah, where the yeah. marginal part comes in. It's okay. not, It's not. now you're in the 22% bracket, so you're paying 22% on everything. It's just the 22% that was above the last break point. That, so, that does make sense. That makes a lot more sense. And it makes me feel a little bit better. I I wonder about the brains who came up with this, but, it, but yes, it makes sense. Now right. I understand why people can be potentially fans of the idea of a flat tax, but that's okay. This is good. This is good. This is good. Oh, right. Yeah. The idea uh, is as you make more money, you pay a larger share of tax on the money, but only only the extra money above the right. the last breakoff right. point. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, so the, the tax rates go up 10, 12, 22, 24, 32, 35, and then the kiddie pool at the bottom that's catching everything else is 37% for whatever is above that level. Okay. So if you make more money, you will pay more tax, but just on the extra money that you made. Yeah. You're still paying sense. the same rates on the on the previous money that you earned. Right. And this is taxable income. So these deductions that we've talked about in other episodes and kind of managing your taxable income through various ways can help potentially influence the maximum bucket that you fall into. Yeah, that's a very good point. The Everybody gets the standard deduction at least, and so that covers your first uh, 
what is it this year, $29,200 that you just get to take back out that part's not taxable. Okay, cool. And then it kind of starts from there. Yeah, and then any other deductions, or if you itemize instead of taking the standard deduction, or you have business income and expenses, all that kind of, you know, the stuff we've talked about other places. But that's the basic idea. So hopefully yeah. that little visual is useful. Yeah, that I, that is. That helped me a lot, actually. So I've, I've heard this explained various ways um, in the past to the point where I was comfortable understanding that I wasn't being taxed such and such percent on all my income. So that that's nice. But that I really like the bucket analogy of the water flowing through those. That's cool. Yeah, thanks, Steve, for explaining that. Yeah, you're welcome. And then at the end of the year, all the buckets get emptied out. You start over again at the, at the yeah. lowest bracket. Start filling that one up. So, as you taught me before, it's always better to earn more money <laughs> from from a tax perspective, even right? Yeah, I mean, more money is is more money. I mean, if you th if more money is better, <laughs> maybe more money is not better for other reasons. But if that's important to you, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, sorry, I just I just it depends. Did you didn't I? Yeah, you did. You just <laughs> it depends. Well, I should say. There's not really a penalty for earning more money from a tax perspective. That's not true either. <laughs> no, but it's not. No, it, there's it's not crazy. a penalty on the money that you already earned if you earn more. Yeah. You could say it that way. That that is true. I'm trying to think of a way to say this, but there I'm not I'm not doing a very good job. Yeah. <laughs> way to, to 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 say what you want to say without me walking into the trap of <laughs> wow, it depends. I'm gonna have to stop you right there. Yes. Yeah. Which is good. That's what you're here for. Keep in <laughs> check. I appreciate it. Yeah. Standing on top of a ladder with a garden hose. Uh, sounds safe. Safe. Yes. It's something everyone does, right? Nailing buckets to the wall. Climbing up on a ladder. This is, this is the most efficient way to fill up your buckets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. exactly. To fill up your kid, the swimming pool for your kids. Yeah. I mean, okay, you, well, could, I think... you could just as easily visualize this as you lined the buckets up along the ground. And then you're sure. you're filling them up in turn, but I like the idea of uh, overflowing and catching into yeah, the no, bucket sense. below them. And there you have it, folks. Dun, dun, dun. Marginal tax rates explained by Steve Nay. You're welcome. You can email us hello at notaboutmoney.com. And we'll catch you on another episode. <laughs>